SEO The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa, and we're looking at a fast conversation. This morning, we stay with Nigerian students that are trapped in Sumi, uh, that's in Ukraine, and what would be the process? I mean, what is the standard? What is the way out to help these uh, kids return back to Nigeria? Now, many Nigerian students have been trapped in Sumi, that's in Ukraine, and they have called for urgent evacuation back home amid the Russian invasion. Sumi in northeast Ukraine is close to Russian border. Now, there's a video obtained online. It's making the rounds. And students said they have been dwindling access to food, water, and electricity. They also said they wake up most mornings to the sound of explosion and spend hours in bomb shelters beneath their hostels. The federal government has also said that they've evacuated 1,000 Nigerians who made it out of Ukraine to neighboring countries such as Poland and Romania. But students in Sumi are yet to find a way out of the war-torn Ukraine. We took a look at the evacuation process. Joining us this morning is an international affairs analyst, Paul Ejime. It's good to have you join us this morning. Thank you, Messi. All right. So um, let's look at it now. What do you make of the fact that Nigerian government says she has evacuated 1,000 Nigerian students so far, although we still have um, some persons being trapped? So I think the fact that some uh, students have been, um, or not only students, but Nigerian citizens have been um, evacuated is, um, is a good thing. But uh, um, in situations like this, it required um, proactive uh, uh, planning and then um, moving very fast because um, you never know. Remember the time that um, President Biden asked all um, Americans to leave? And people thought that um, perhaps um, he was being, it was um, all um, crying um, uh, wolf. Uh, and that is the kind of, uh, you know, uh, proactivity that one should have expected from Nigeria to make sure that um, you don't leave uh, citizens on the uh, line of uh, fire. Um, so one will understand that, that perhaps there will be some logistic uh, problems and then the fact that perhaps not all the students are registered with the embassy and so coordinating from um, uh, Abuja or Lagos and then um, all those capitals where the um, Nigerians are supposed to assemble before evacuation. But I think the earlier that is done, the better. I saw the same video where the students were saying they were now um, having to walk. And um, one said that he came close to um, saw uh, some Russian troops and all that. That is not good for the uh, psychology of these people because the trauma that will go with it, even when they don't die, could live with them for, for the rest of their life. So I think um, those, um, the foreign ministry and um, all the, um, you know, one should congratulate them for the fact that I think two airlines, um, Airpeace and Max Air, have been uh, charged with that responsibility. But um, they need now to make, um, uh, uh, time is of the essence. They need to uh, do the evacuation as, um, as quickly as possible. Okay, so I like the fact that we're also not just uh, limiting it to students, but we're looking at Nigerians who are in, you know, this particular space now. Now, but this all this this particular one where you have a student from Nigeria recounting the fact that uh, he spent four days, five hundred and ninety miles journey trying to escape the war torn area. Well, my question now would be: uh, We have seen this video of students in Sumi who are saying that they have been trapped and sometimes they have to take a uh, shield, they have to run to the bomb shelters and what have you just to uh, protect themselves. And they have just been without food and it's very cold out there. What is the rule of engagement at this point in time where um, you know, the Nigerian government, on the other hand, is trying to evacuate um, you know, her citizens uh, in these countries? Well, in a one situation, and that is why, um, uh, you know, uh, the world should try as much as possible, because those who haven't seen war, they joke with it. They think it's a child's play or walk in the park. No, when it, the bullet does not respect anybody and then suffering and uh, what comes with war is um, so devastating and unpredictable. So you needed to, uh, even when you prepare for it, um, it can take you by surprise. Um, there are rules of engagement, yes. Uh, the, those fighting, the um, 
uh, Ukrainians and then the Russians that are fighting. By the way, these are supposed to be uh, cousins. They are related. But uh, this is world war. If now family in a family, they can fight themselves. Imagine what will happen to uh, people from um, other places. And you have seen the level of um, uh, racism that has also played out in the way the whole thing is being reported as if uh, uh, life, uh, black lives don't matter. Uh, some journalists, um, very uh, uh, uneducated, um, some of them uh, will be saying that uh, these are uh, Europeans, uh, mind you, these are supposed to be democracy. They have blue eyes, they have um, uh, blonde hair. Uh, it's not uh, Iraq, it's not uh, Afghanistan. As if those areas, or it's not a third world country. As if those areas they are mentioning are not um, the human beings. But that is the reality of the world, that um, they, as much as they deny that there is uh, um, racism, it is there, uh, you know, it's a reality. The same thing when it comes to rule of engagement in wars, you never know what the truth they say is the uh, this um, uh, writer, uh, Philip um, Knightley, it said that um, truth is the first casualty of, uh, of war. Um, they, they, they see the propaganda going on. Uh, today, Ukrainians will say they have killed uh, thousands of um, uh, Russians, and Russians will say, you know, you know. So, and in that mix, you, you, you just pray that you never get caught up in that kind of um, uh, crossfire. Because, um, you know, uh, everybody can tell their own story. And it is those who survive that can tell stories. They say that dead men or dead women dead tell no tales. So uh, rules of engagement, yes, the uh, international, the UN and others, humanitarian, I think they are trying to get a ceasefire to have a humanitarian corridor. But this, um, uh, you know, uh, is easier said than done. What is on the ground is uh, different, except those who have experienced it. That is when, um, uh, they, you know, if you survive, then you give God the glory. But prepare, you know, once you find yourself in that uh, situation, find your way. The exit point is what you, you are not part of it. Uh, uh, Africans or Nigerians are not part of it. So they shouldn't um, get themselves uh, mixed up in them. There has to be coordination, coordination from um, uh, Nigeria to with um, those um, uh, buffer states, Poland and all those that are where they have asked um, uh, those in Ukraine or in Russia who want to leave Russia to go and assemble. Um, apart from uh, just uh, blaming uh, government or blaming anybody, those who are also involved have a duty to also help themselves to make their way to um, uh, a safe place where it will become, you know, safer to um, evacuate them. Rules of engagement, yes, you mentioned that. But uh, in war, um, like I said, the bullets or the missiles, they don't, they don't respect uh, color. They don't respect anybody. So you pray never to be um, in that kind of uh, crossfire. All right, so, so Paul Ejime, just before, um, I mean, just before we actually uh, look at the, the students of Nigeria, we'll definitely roll that tape in no time. Are you saying that as, as at this point during the time of Great war, uh, that we can't have, um, you know, different governments engaging? For instance, we hear that uh, Geoffrey Oyema is having some diplomatic talks as regards, you know, the students right now um, with uh, the government and, I mean, of Ukraine and what have you and those in Russia at a time, you know, to evacuate. Are you saying that it's not possible to have conversations uh, with um, this person in government? Different diplomatic talks to go on at a time like this? No, there is. I mean, but that is the whole thing about coordination. Uh, these uh, countries that I mentioned in uh, Poland and others, they have um, embassies in Nigeria and uh, that are also in contact with their countries uh, back home. So Nigeria should have, there has to be that coordination. Talk with them before you, you land. You don't just go there uh, without informing them. That is um, uh, important. And tell them that um, these are Nigerians that are under uh, uh, distress uh, or in distress. So how do you, how do they uh, assist? I have seen that Poland in one, one or two um, uh, video clips, they have shown them, um, some people have also commended them for uh, taking in um, uh, African, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, evacuees. But the point is, um, if we say, it's not a normal situation. 
So war is um, what nobody should pray for. That is why we keep saying it. And um, uh, perhaps Nigerians, the Nigerian government authorities didn't act uh, early enough, but they say better late than, than never. They should find a way of getting in touch with those students, those that have now complaining that they haven't been, um, uh, they are not reached or the, because of where they are. To be able to reach them, get in touch with um, those uh, countries that share borders with uh, Russia and then Ukraine. To be able to and then make an um, adequate announcement. Communication is very key. You can have the best uh, plan, but if you don't communicate it, then that is a problem. So how do the students get to know that this is what the Nigerian government has uh, in place for them? That is the, the duty of uh, Nigerian missions um, in Ukraine and then uh, Russia or Poland or in the area, this area of uh, conflict. So there has to be that coordination to make sure that um, the planes do not even come home uh, empty without carrying um, taking those who are in distress. That is one thing, because you can have that plan and then you go there, you are not able to communicate and make sure that you have enough uh, people that are coming. Uh, even though when even though government has already, um, I, I heard that the, the president has signed off uh, uh, some 8.5 um, uh, million um, US dollars for the evacuation. So it, I don't think it would be nice or fair to let that money go or go into uh, private pockets without uh, doing the job. So let bring the Nigerians home, uh, those who are willing to come come home, because don't be surprised that some may have a uh, uh, reason to, to, to remain, those who have families or ties or so. So it's not everybody, um, that, they don't have, that is their free choice. But let the Nigerian government, they have a responsibility of, to, to all citizens of Nigeria everywhere in the world. That is what government is about, not just those within the, the, the borders of Nigeria, but outside, every Nigerian. That is why you talk about Nigerians in diaspora. That is why you have a commission that is in charge of uh, Nigerians in diaspora. And you have the foreign ministry. This is their job. Let them step, uh, step up to the plate and then um, uh, get Nigerians, evacuate Nigerians that are willing to come home. And in time, time of the, is of the essence. So coordination, timeliness, and then, um, you know, respecting um, international best practices. So, so we have a breaking news saying that uh, the Nigerian government has started evacuating students from Sumi. I mean, Nigerians are not necessarily students, and that's a very great one. But would, let's just quickly take a, a roll the state of Nigerians who have been trapped and uh, the message that they're putting across. We'll be right back after this timeout. Great Nigerian students. Great. Great. This is what do we want? We want to go! Home. What do we want? We want to go! Home. People, we do not ask, we do not tell them to stop their war. They can continue. Are we begging them? Do they have do we have any personal interest in this? No. No. What are we gaining from it? Nothing! We just want to go home. I beg you, everybody, let us do so we can go home. Because I'm really not interested in coming back. I don't want to come back. I don't want to come back. Please, we want Let's to go. Let us just go home. Early this morning, 5 a.m., 4 a.m., we are woken up with how many bombs? Six. It was six. I counted each and every one of them. Six. Next thing, we want to go home. And they are telling us, first of all, they increase the price of taxi. Who pays almost two million naira to go back to Porta for a two-hour journey? Anybody that is hearing this, from Kaduna to Abuja, two hours. You are telling me to pay a million naira. For like the past two weeks now since this war has started, Apparently, there has been a route to leave Sumi since. But school has refused to provide us with buses, with um, transportation to leave this place. We know about like almost 50 students that have left from this Sumi, uni um, Sumi to go to Portava. At any amount, we do not care what they have left. Now they have decided to go and block that route. At this point, I don't know what is going on, and we are not going to be used as bait. Please, let you us you. go. Please, let us go. We do not want to be a part of your war. Please. How would you do this? We could reach agreement with the Ukrainian government, the Russian government, a serious agreement. Just create a humanitarian corridor so we can live here. We are tired. A lot of people are going to develop PSTD after this. And it's going to be very serious on this. And that can be very emotional. Uh, Paul Ajima, international affairs analyst, is still with us. Uh, Paul, are you still with us this morning? Yes, I am. I am, Messi. And... Uh, so... 
Yeah, go ahead. So, so you actually had from the student. I'm sure you probably would have heard of, 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 or you probably would have seen that video and had your thoughts and the fact that you're calling. But we have feelers saying that at this point that the Nigerian government uh, has actually waved in and then they're trying to evacuate. The students have been stranded in Sumi. We're hoping that everyone, every Nigerian is actually evacuated in this war-torn area. Uh, but let's share your thoughts on some of the concerns that they have raised. They talked about the fact that the roads have been blocked and, and, and that they don't want to be used as a bait. Yes, they, they should also behave themselves. When you are in a foreign country, you also have to uh, respect the, the rules. And um, let's face it, there are things that are also outside the control of the Nigerian government. Let's give it, you know, they are not in control of uh, uh, Russia or Ukraine or Poland. So the students should also exercise some patience and behave themselves, not um, talk, um, you know, say things that can um, aggravate the situation. Let them be, be I know, you know, it's, um, uh, you, it's normal for human beings when they are stressed or when they are in that kind of situation, to um, uh, react, but they should also be mindful of the fact that they are very far away from home. This is, they are not uh, dealing with Nigerian government in, in Nigeria. So they have to be patient and channel their uh, uh, grievances to the uh, appropriate um, uh, uh, quarters. Nigeria has, uh, I hope, representative in, um, or representation in Ukraine, in Poland, and then in Russia. Those are the ones that should um, carry the message from these students back to Abuja. And then Abuja will, and we are not talking about wasting time now because there is no time, um, you know. So they, they need to behave themselves and the government of Nigeria should act quickly. Um, even though I have mentioned it, that it appears that they are, you know, uh, they've lost um, some time uh, when this thing, because you all, that is part of um, uh, uh, governance. We look at him. Look at looking at the intelligence uh, report information to know when you have to move. Otherwise, if you move one second, um, you know, late, it can result in a disaster and catastrophe. So, uh, but it's nobody's fault at this moment. Um, but government should now, like, thank God, they have uh, stepped up. They are going to answer to the needs of this, uh, to, not just these students, but every Nigerian. I also read somewhere that uh, even Nigeria uh, is helping the, the, the planes that are sending, they are sending to that region. We can we'll be able to bring some ECOWAS citizens. Yes, but before you talk about uh, ECOWAS citizens, let um, Nigerians be the priority. Because that, that is Nigeria, it's Nigerian money that is being spent. The big brother rule can come, um, you know, it's a secondary. So we have to prioritize Nigerian citizens first, and then you can take on any other person that, um, um, uh, you know, you are able or capable to, uh, to assist. That is good. That is, is, is good in, uh, in this kind of um, uh, uh, humanitarian, it's part of humanitarian um, uh, uh, role that you can play. But for God's sake, these students, they should also behave themselves and channel their, their grievances to the right uh, authority, right quarters, and that uh, will be relayed to Nigeria. And within, this is uh, the age of technology. You know, it doesn't take time to, they, can, they have their phones, they can call uh, uh, anybody uh, if they have been able to establish uh, where the Nigerian uh, missions or authorities are in that region, who will then uh, send news across. So even this uh, video they have made is also one way. Social media, nothing is a secret anymore. So as it's happening, I think uh, they are getting it in the Foreign Affairs Ministry in Abuja and the diplomatic um, uh, community. So what remains to be done now is not just talk, but action, action, action to make sure that this uh, every Nigerian that is um, uh, who wants to come home and is under distress there can be um, uh, brought home safely, into safety, um, while uh, the rest of the world begin to do what they have to do to end um, this um, uh, uh, senseless war. It's, uh, it's unnecessary, actually. It's avoidable.
Mm. Well, uh, let's also let you know that uh, the Ukrainian government has approved the evacuation of Nigerian students stranded in Sumi following the invasion of Russia into the country. And this has actually necessitated, you know, the movement by the Nigerian government. Or well, you have the uh, Nigerian um, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Geoffrey Oyema, announcing uh, the, the entire process. Uh, very commendable. But um, let me come back to you now, Paula Jime. And this really breaks my heart because I'm having goosebumps right now in the studio and I'm feeling so chilled and I'm wondering what is all of this? The big question here is what are your thoughts on the idea that Nigerians would constantly have to leave Nigeria to go to foreign countries, Russia, um, you know, um, Ukraine, the United Kingdom, Nigerians are everywhere, you know, seeking for education or even a better life. And necessarily for the fact that you have students moving, it's been attributed to the fact that the poor standard of, you know, schooling and poor economy and what have you, this, does it break your heart? Well, I, I think our hearts have become too, um, have become unbreakable by, by Nigerian standard. Things that happen in Nigeria, we, we have become um, unshockable, not in shocks now. But um, you are right, um, normally, that should um, worry any government or those who have um, uh, been elected to look into those aspects, all the aspects of governance. But let's also face it. Let's begin by saying that um, mobility, human mobility, is um, can happen even during peacetime, even when things are going normal. Even th when things are normal, you can move from here. You know, you can't really stop people. People move for different reasons. Family you know, job opportunities and then education, like you said. But there are what you call the pull and push factors. What is it that is pushing Nigerians to, to go away? And what is, uh, the, what is pulling them? What is pulling them is, um, they call it um, greener pastors. And what is pushing them out of the country? These are what you have mentioned. The fact that those things that they are looking for outside, they cannot get, it, get them at home good education uh, uh, ministers and those um, uh, lawmakers they send their children abroad even to ghana and other places why would you imagine that a, a minister for education will be sending his own children uh, abroad what happens what is what is that what message is it sending to the to the country if you cannot fix it. And then look at um, uh, uh, health. In the health sector, Nigeria has become a very, uh, we pay so much in, uh, in terms of uh, what they call uh, medical uh, tourism. You know, from uh, cutting across all, um, at times they tell you if you can afford it. That is not the issue. It is the fact that it does not exist. You don't have it. You don't have roads. You don't have electricity. There is no, look at the queue. Um, you know, I, just, I left um, Abuja a few, um, a, a, about a week ago, and you saw the, 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 the madness at filling stations. And I thought we had passed that, that stage. And why are we, meanwhile, this is a country that is producing oil. We so we people are suffering in the midst of, there is poverty in the midst of uh, wealth. The wealth is not going, it's not spreading, it's not going across. There are those who are enjoying it, the minority. They have cornered, they have captured the state, they have captured state institution, and they have captured the common wealth. And they're spending it among themselves while the majority of the people are suffering. That is why you find people, do you know what, how much it costs? to send a child uh, 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 to school in those places from 10,000 uh, to 15,000 uh, uh, either pounds or uh, dollars or whatever they are using. That is not small money. We, you can, with half of that, you can have a, a working and a fu functional and effective education system that will limit this, uh, this um, uh, mass exodus, brain drain, because you even find that even after training, these people do not even come back. They, they, they take that, those uh, skills and what they have uh, learned, they remain there. Uh, so much so that um, you find more uh, me medical uh, skilled workers, uh, skilled um, manpower outside Niger Nigerians that are outside the country, in the US, in, in Europe, everywhere. And then, you know, 
what the, the, the weather in um, in that very far place is uh, is not what somebody can contemplate coming from a, a, a tropical um, a, a climate. But they're, they're forced. That is the push factor. What is pushing them away? That should concern those who are managing the economy, those who are in charge of governance, from um, you know the executive, the legislature, and then the judiciary, because those who are there. They have their children outside the country. Why do they send their children outside the country and pretend that they are supposed to make they are supposed to make this work in Nigeria? It is because it's not working. I think um, Nigerians should ask questions. Another election is coming in 2023. 20, 20, the, the, the recruitment process. Who are those? What are what is the quality of those that you are bringing? Are you going to get a, 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 an education minister that will be sending happy and then it's convenient for him or her to be sending his own children abroad? Who are the ones that will go to public schools? The private ones are not uh, uh, cheap either. So they have, we, Nigeria has the resources to make things work. When you hear about what um, some individuals have, the world they control, that is why they are not in the West. When you go to beg or when you go to ask for loans, they know that bring two or three Nigerians or those in the in government. What they have is enough to run this government and even more many countries. But it's ending up in private pockets. Greed, corruption, nepotism, you know, and wickedness. I think I have to add wickedness because they they possess they 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 they, 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 they gather more than they need, you know acquisition. You want to want you know what do you people need that for? You have houses. You can only sleep in the, on a bed in one room. You have so many vehicles. Some even take their vehicles into their into their you know they have into their bedroom to show to show off ostentatious living. When some people cannot feed, when people are, are virtually feeding from the dustbin, I mean, that is uh, how bad it can be. But, 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 quality, mm. yes, go ahead. I'm sorry, but just to add this to you, I don't know if you were in the know that uh, efforts have been made and there's this bill that has been rejected. Uh, the reps actually rejected the bill seeking to stop children of public office holders from schooling abroad. And so um, this is how, you know, you try to want to change the situation, but that bill was rejected. And it feels like we probably yeah, might just continue in this circle. It's a case of enlightened self-interest. They will never allow that kind of thing because they know they are trapped in it. That is, would you expect them? It's like somebody where you say where they are chopping. They, you want to close their the place, their workshop. They won't let it happen. But that tells you the the kind of uh, hypocrisy, the kind of unseriousness, the kind of uh, unconscionable type of people that you have in governance. I mean, why would it? If if uh, they meant well, if they, they were sincere, they will let it. They will pass that bill, but they cannot. And that is the, the reason the, the ball is now in the court of uh, Nigerians, those, the electorate, that when it's not enough for that for you to sell your vote during the election for 5,000, 1,000 or a bag of rice, and then until the next uh, four years, ask questions, demand accountability. The money that has been voted for education, how, what has happened to it? Asu is uh, perpetually on, uh, on strike. That even when those who are in, supposed to be in school, if you are supposed to graduate within four years, they, they are spending about 10 years for, for a course of four years. Is that not? That's part of the reason, the push factor. That is part of what is pushing people to go abroad. Where the, the calendar, academic calendar is respected. You go for four years, you finish, and then you are sure. But not when you go in, a, you start a one course, and it takes you 10 years to graduate. And then even after graduation, where is the job? So there is so much, um, um, you know, insincerity and then hypocrisy and then unseriousness among those who are in charge of, uh, uh, among the authorities. And that has to change. And who can change it? It is the people. Ask questions. What uh, they say they have their uh, constituencies. Why can't those people ask them? They go back to them. Uh, when they come, they say, they, they say uh, they are hailing them. 
you know, you saw a place where a policeman was uh, even carrying um, uh, uh, food uh, uh, plate for, for uh, an official. Is that the kind of place we want in this country? Police that is supposed to be protecting uh, protection of people, of the citizens. His job or her job was not to be carrying serving. Hmm. Is that what it is? These are some of the you know, uh, uh, what you consider that, you know, that, that unconscionable kind of things that are happening in the system. That system is dysfunctional. It has to change, beginning from uh, the, even the top to the, to the lowest. Because leadership is not just about those who are in government. It has to start also from the family. How are the fam how are parents uh, 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 training their own children? Apology when man. you train your child to not to respect institution they have money these ministers what do they do they have their, their children are they are spoiled they, they look at the kind of cars they ride because they are not they have the money they have even foreign currency when um, uh, ordinary nigerians are begging are trying to make ends meet their parents are treating them in a way that um but whatever goes around with comes around if you look at um I'm not um, wishing anybody ill, but look at the kind of uh, children that is uh, that turn out from some of these people who steal money. It, uh, there is karma, apart from just um, not justice. Now, that, let them remember. Let them remember God that what they do to other people will come back to them. You uh, know, Paul if they steal the train, it's not going to work for them. It won't work. Let me not sound uh, begin to sound philosophical, but um, apology, but in uh, in actual life and then in spiritual life, they everybody will pay for whatever they have done. Mr. Paul Ajima, thank you so much for being part of The Breakfast this morning. And we appreciate your thoughts, every one of it, on the show. We look forward to having more of you on our show. And uh, we wish you a very beautiful day ahead. Thank you, Mercy. And may, the, may God have mercy on us and the whole world. <laughs> Thank you so much. And how he ended that one. But the big question here is, I mean, there's a lot of questioning. He's talked about uh, the calendar being distorted, academic calendar being distorted. And what is the faith of the Nigerian student that are back in Niger? What happens? We already know that, you know, the negotiation ceasefire between Russia and Ukraine is, doesn't seem to be uh, making any progress. But that would definitely be a discussion for another day. In the meantime, let us just quickly take this break. When we return, we'll head straight to a second conversation. Please stay with us.